two, one, we are live. Welcome to the Off Court Live Show. Chad here with Andrew, week five. Everyone take five seconds, hold up your five, and give someone a high five, or yourself, if you're by yourself. All right, so, hey, listen, you made it this far. Like, every now and then it's just good to like, Pat yourself on the back, or at least recognize, you know, that like we're doing this, man. We're we're doing we're doing a good job because like you can get caught up in this performance thing of just like, what's next? Keep going forward. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So just take some time. Um, Evans in the house. What's up? Mia is in the house. How's everyone doing? You got anything to say before we dive into the tools? Week five is exciting. Um, yeah, you guys are you guys are deep in the cycle. This is this is just this is a great time to give your guys some some credit, and this is a great time to just start the process of finishing strong. Yeah, yep, we're in it. Let's talk about the new pops coming down the pipeline. Rise, we got rise. Yep, we got pop rise. We got pop speak. Um, you know, if, if, if you guys are looking to embrace some intensity, this is the week to do it. This is, um, you know, the way I think about these ex- the exercises that are in this week is, has a lot to do with self-expression. Um, and for tennis players, for you tennis players, the main way that you express yourself is with your stroke, is with your racket. So, you know, <clears throat> when we think about expressing ourselves, um, the word authentic, comes to mind, um, I think that word gets tossed, all, tossed around a lot these days on what it actually means to be authentic. Um, what does it mean, what does it mean for you, be authentic? That's a great question. And you I know, know it's, it's, it's an ever evolving, que- it should be an ever evolving question because everyone's, you know, on this process of like being more authentic. That's yeah. like what the process is. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly what it is. Like the, the main way the main like intellectual way that I think about it is this moment has never happened before. And so you're receiving this moment, you're partially receiving it for what it is. And it's partially your projections and your judgments about what it is, but that's, it's, it's not only new, it's uniquely yours too. the way you're receiving this moment, how you're responding to it, what you're giving back to the moment, how you're imposing and asserting yourself to what you're receiving is, also, you have more capability than, you, than the last time you gave to the moment. You know, you're more evolved, you're, you've grown, and you're, you've learned more about yourself. So you give, you, you're giving what you have in a little bit unique way. The collision of this new moment with what you have new, the more you can respect exactly what that is, is that's what it means to be authentic to me. Um, the easier way, the, 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 the more like intentiony, Kind of way that I think about because like you know express yourself or like be authentic like the those are very like woo woo like and not the, very yeah. I like to think of this as like expressing yourself as like maybe this is just my personality and how I played as an athlete but the word savage comes to mind and I remember when I when we were when I was making these exercises for this week um, I almost the dream stroke. The dream stroke is electric this week. I almost called it dream stroke savage, and I almost took it in a little bit different direction. Maybe I'll have to make that, and we'll launch it for this week. But um, the word savage comes to mind, and so as you guys have probably heard, you know, we we've been on this like give what you have kind of kick of intention, and I like to step it up in week five. We're we're kind of letting that intention evolve, and the intention that I like to have for this week is spit your truth, you know, and like. I've been listening to a lot of like early two thousands like hip hop. I was rap. just gonna like, say when you say when when you say express yourself, I think of NWA. Yeah. Express yourself, and for any of you that like hip hop or rap, like that, they definitely like took that to another level, and that's why it's part of the you know electricity of, of hip hop music is they're really expressing themselves. They're really spitting um, truth, um, and they're being authentic. And even when it was very counterculture, like back in the day, but you guys never heard of NWA, Express Yourself. <laughs> yeah, classic homework. song. I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure you've heard, maybe heard the song, but 
Um, yeah, so I think I, I have this, there's like this intensity, there's this heat to it because it's like, um, you know, we're involving like our emotion into it. And so that's where authenticity is cool because it's like, it's uniquely yours and the way you're going to like, the way you feel right now, it's always unique. Your emotions are, they're always evolving, you know? And so like, it's always unique, but it's just like to go out there and spit your truth. Um, what that looks like for a tennis player is like, you know, the enforcer of your truth is your tennis racket. That thing enforces your truth. And so if you're too busy trying to um, get an outcome, you're not spitting your truth. You're not going out in there and spitting your truth. Because when you realize, like if, you, if, if a few of you have had pep talks with and the other ones that have been reading the Friday Racket and stuff like that, we've had this intention of giving what you have, you realize like that intention doesn't include a thought process. You don't need to think about anything in order to give what you have. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a purely action-based thing. And the next evolution of that is like spitting your truth or expressing yourself and like, like go out there and like just spit your truth. Like what would that actually look like if you just stepped out on the tennis court and you're like, I'm, it's, it's, the, it's, it's like giving what you have, but now put your flair on it. Like, like put some oomph behind it. Like put your feeling behind it. Put your emotions behind it. Like make it uniquely yours. And it's like, because at the end of the day, this is a brand new moment and you're a brand new person. Why do you have some type of idea in your head that there's a right way to live right now? There's a right way to hit this tennis ball. This is what, you know, we, we, have, this, we have this intention of improvement all the time. But really, it's not that effective. It's not a very effective intention because it's always, you're, you're coming out of the present moment. You're trying to create, you're trying to get better than you are right now rather than just know, like, give 100% of yourself to this moment. That's the only way that improvement actually occurs. And so just like, you can center your, atten you can center your attention and put your action behind that and just like, go out there and just spit your truth. So... The two pop exercises, pop rise, it's this presence exercise that you feel really sad, you feel savage, you feel empowered. You're like, it's, you're, you're allowing this, you're pulling from deep within like this, this, you know, it's, it's not, it's just this powerful energy. You know, you just want to like, those times where you just want to go out there and just like lay it on the line and just like, you know, if you're in the mood for a workout, you just like go in like that kind of energy. So it's an effective, it's a, it's a really powerful exercise. The other one, pop speak is... A lot of the way we express ourselves is very correlated with our voice and our opinion, um, because like that's what your truth is. Your truth, your truth is your opinion, but your opinion is your truth. Like your opinion is this is how I, this is this is what I feel the situation is at hand. This is what I feel like I'm capable of giving, and that makes me feel a certain way. That's your truth, and only you know that truth. So that's why it has to be. You can't be always listening to some type of external advice that this is the way you need to play or this is the way you need to hit the ball at a certain point you need to let go of that and just spit your truth and go out there and spit your truth so it's very associated with like our opinion and like our voice and so pop speak is the is the process of bringing attention to like your voice and it's a it can be like a very ephemeral experience you know and it's just like you you allow that to get empowered and like because it's just like go out there and like speak man speak like go out there and like like think of a tennis match as like like every time you hit the ball it's like it's a brain like this the dynamic of this exact situation has never happened before it's never happened before so like you're essentially every single time you hit the ball you're you're proclaiming to the universe this is how i think this situation should be handled and no one can say you're right or wrong because the next moment it's a new dynamic and there's a new situation. And yes, there's best practices and there's technique and stuff like that. But if you, if you can treat the moment like that, like you, you start to let go of all of these rules in your head. If you guys really think about what's causing so much mental activity, it's all the rules, all the rules that you're following in your head of how you're supposed to play, which leads you to the state of trying. So we're in this perpetual state of trying and then the emotional turbulence Every thought you have creates an emotional, you know, response within you. Your thoughts are flying all over the place. What do you think is going to happen to your emotions? You're going to have an insane amount of emotional turbulence. And so when our intention, because just go out there and spit, like speak your truth, spit your truth, go out there and like, and play like that. 
You know, you, you, you stop. There's no rules to think about anymore. And when there's no rules to think about anymore, and you can get to that place where there's, there's space in your mind, you can start to hear your intuition. And then that's, then that, that's your, your truth just gets more and more and more powerful, but you can't access those deeper levels of your intuitive play until you start getting in the habit of just going out in there and spitting your truth. And, you know, I was, I was thinking of like, I've been listening to early, you know, early 2000s hip hop, you know, Eminem, Lil Wayne, you know, stuff like that. And it's like, think about how, how rappers freestyle. Like, if they have a single thought, it's over. Yep. You can't think and freestyle at the same time. Yeah. You can't do it. It's one of the, it's one of like literally the hardest things to do. There's, you have to be in such a, there's no time. There's no time to think. Like in tennis, there's enough downtime between the points that there's time to think. But pretend that's not downtime. Right. That's just like. Part of it. It's part of it. Just spit your truth in, in a relaxed way. Spit your truth in a recovery way. Like, you know, like, and just be in that place. And so it's like, you can just sustain that level of intensity and it's just like you're constantly putting all of your effort into an effective direction rather than trying to control the outcome which is going to leave you in this state of strain forceful trying maybe even the other direction of being timid playing not to lose like the way you get out of that isn't by letting go of that you know almost every question i've gotten in in these pep talks have been how do i let go of the outcome it's like you can't let go of the outcome it's not an action that you take you let go of the outcome by redirecting your attention into something that you can control. The outcome is not in your control. What is in your control is how intensely are you spitting your truth? I like it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like the throw out the rule book thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, like, that's how you can really be there, be in the moment. Um, a couple couple things that I always think about when you say that. If you guys have seen Pirates of the uh, Caribbean, <laughs> where they're like they have the rule, the code, the code, and 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 they always say like, oh, it's more like guidelines. Like that's how you kind of want to treat these guardrails and stuff like that. Yeah. Um. So, and I think that rappers like they they um they really kind of like embody that. Mm-hmm. Uh, another group of individuals that embody that is a. Uh, fighter pilots and we've had this discussion before but um you know growing up or just being involved with marine corps aviation and like navy aviation we have like so much less rules than the air force which is why we're better like dog fighters like historically Mm -hmm. they have all these situational guidelines and stuff whereas like the other the other kind of branches Mm -hmm. um just like kind of throw the rule book out and it's just real time responding Mm -hmm. which is like an interesting take on it um but move talking about fighter pilot let's move on to the body section and you know it's very in line with this like influx of energy and influx of intensity um with the next three primes coming down the pipeline prime 13 prime 14 prime 15 it's getting real it got real. You guys probably like prime 11, prime 12. You're like, all right, prime 11 probably got you. Like it's getting real. Prime 13. This is a pivotal, pivotal prime. You're going to look at it and you're going to be like, oh, ISO holds. You need to watch the instructional video prime 13 because it's a, it's a different type of ISO hold. All right. This is where we introduce a concept called max pulling. All right. And I did lunges for probably three, I don't know, what do you think, three or four years before this was like, oh, this is how you do the lunge. And it, it is, is, is mind boggling because as you're learning from prime 11, like you can always, you could always push it like 10 more seconds. You can always, like if you drop, you probably could have went five more seconds. So there's like this time dimension that you're pushing. Well, prime 13 adds a, Um, another dimension that you can infinitely get better and that's this concept of pulling into it basically like flexing into the position with max effort i want you guys to throw the time out the window think of it as a sprint all right could you sprint for three minutes without dropping you could not sprint for three minutes you can maybe hit your your top speed for um you know 
is less than 10 seconds for sure. So if you're pulling like really hard, like you can drop every 10 seconds. That's what Prime 13 is all about. But it's like max intensity. So um, definitely look at the, the instructional because it's just going to explain it a lot better. But like the vibe of it is exactly what you're saying, where it's just like another level of like, mm -hmm. of like intensity. Um, do you have anything to add about, about max pulling? <sighs> um really feel your body you mm -hmm. know you're gonna have you're gonna like whenever we think about maximizing intensity a lot of times we can get into our mind a little bit and we can get like really tense like mentally um really feel your body really try to come from a place let your intensity come from a place of stillness yeah and then you know so that's prime 13 prime um 14 we add another thing that has not been seen in the previous primes, which is, um, drum roll, altitude drops. So some of you blueprinters are familiar with altitude drops, but we haven't done those yet. And prime 14, altitude drops are going down, which if you think about it, it's another, it's, it's another um, way to do max intensity there's just a little bit more time in between so you can kind of gather yourself and just put everything into the rep this is about putting every single thing into the rep if you guys heard my monday motivation not this week but last week it's like that i described this nfl player having a five rep workout it's like that it's like everything into one um rep you know when i got introduced to altitude drops i've, ter I've told this story a few times but um they wrote a quote on the whiteboard <laughs> this is this is how i got introduced to altitude drops all right i'm in a gym with professional athletes the trainer writes the on the whiteboard feel every moment before it happens and live that moment like it's the last one you're ever going to live and they made me read that in between every single rep. So literally one rep of an altitude drop, walked across the gym, read it, walked across the gym. So there was like two minutes in between each reps. And I just did that for a uh, long time. But, um, you know, so that's, that's prime 14. All right, prime 15 is another version of the extreme slows. Definitely just, um, you know, watch the instructionals on these and then, and. It's just going to be another. Uh, it's it's going to be another level of intensity, where that's actually the um, purpose of it and the function of it. So you know, prime eleven was about getting that time without dropping. You know, now it's it's not about the time. It's about the intensity of like muscle contraction. So that's what's coming down the pipeline body section. It's powerful. Yeah. It's power. Those are three powerhouse primes. Yeah. 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 As I mean, there's a lot of intensity with all, all three of these prime workouts. Um, you know, the more the more stillness we're coming from, the more explosive we have the potential to be. So, in between reps or in the downtime, if 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 Chad's not saying something during the actual prime, like get get back to a place of stillness. You know, like I I, I think about it like. If, if you're going to go out there, if you're going to go out into the match court and you're just going to go out there and spit your truth, there's nothing to plan. There's no, there's no like, all right, I'm going to think about, try to like really kind of execute on my game plans. Like, no, you're just like, you're like a fight. You, you, you think these like UFC fighters are like thinking before the, they fight? They're not thinking. They're walking, they walk out. There's no thoughts going through their mind. They might be repeating like one thing to themselves, but like, like the, I mean, it's just zoned. Realize that like your zone is in the opposite direction of your thinking mind. You're, every time you enter your thinking mind, you're you're walking away from your zone. Listen, like and one, so right, with, with physical, with I'll, yeah. let, I'll let you do that. But with with when it, we're you know we're doing actual fitness and stuff like that, what that looks like is stillness. Yeah, you just get back to this place of stillness. There's nothing. You don't have to think about the next rep you're doing. You don't have to think about the next exercise you're doing. You're just getting back to this place of stillness, regrouping a little bit, and you're you're allowing yourself to to come from a, a greater place of stability, and you can um, express your explosiveness and your and your expression a little bit more. Absolutely, you just hit it. You know, you hit it right on the head, and you can look at other 
intense you know i love how you, you brought up the fighting just because that's like, like that's an intense sport so it's like it's a little bit more highlighted it's just different it's going it's different going through that tunnel and going through other tunnels but like you know even like sprinters that are doing something so explosive like olympic sprinters like you see how relaxed they are right before they shoot off the right before the gun like literally a millisecond before the gun like literally how relaxed they're getting like that's where you want to be like before an altitude drop like rep and stuff like that and like and then explode into it um the the winter olympics are coming up like watch the snowboarders like right before a half pipe drop like it's just highlighted in these sports because it's, there's like physical, there's such a physicality like on the line, you know? And so like do that, like that's, that's how you do an altitude drop. Yeah. Like Sean White dropping into the half pipe. <laughs> so analogy. Um, got a comment here. Learning how to voluntarily enter a state of stillness and staying there has been my biggest priority lately. At this level, I simply can't compete with others if I'm not still. That's a great, um, you know, that's a huge priority. Yeah. You know, that'll take you a long way. For yeah. Sure. Um, love it. Want to talk about the strokes? Yeah. Dream stroke electric. Let's do it. I like, you know, I was, I was saying earlier, I was going to use the word savage and, and make the exercise a little bit different, but I decided to go with electric because, you know, when we want to go out there and like an electric performance is one of like, to me, it's like one of the highest compliments. It's the one like when you see someone giving an electric performance, it's like you, you realize you don't get to that place by thinking. You don't think your pl- way to these electric performances. Like this electric performance is when like there's th- this this week is about embodying the the complete letting go of the outcome. How you completely, completely detach from the outcome is by putting 100% of your attention, 100% of your intention into, into spitting your truth. Just like this electric, like the electricity, like lightning strike, just a boom. Like those electric performances is just like, just like you're saying, when you can come from that place of stillness, like your body can, the muscles can all now work together. If you're approaching the the point of of execution with tension, like your muscles already tense, it can't it can't fire properly in the right sequence, and your whole body can't work together. And so, this dream stroke electric is about coming from that place of stillness, but just feeling what it feels like to just strike, you know. And like, yes, you're getting to your you're coming. The strike is about getting to the point of contact, but like, that it's there's. I think there's a lot of undue uh, emphasis on the actual strike of the ball. Like a lot of times, like, like um, you know, I think in the exercise, it's like you're being the calm and like you have to, if you want to be the storm, you got to be the calm, you know, the calm that precedes the storm. And yeah. so it's like, you're the calm and let your, like your mind is the calm, let your body be the storm, let your stroke be the storm. And so like, that's how you can give electric performances is just like, like, there's you don't have to think this is not a thinking process your thinking mind is is trying to follow all of these rules you you think people are capable of giving like oh that guy man he just followed all the rules like so nicely man that's why he could just go no man it's not it's not what happens you know like if if you have a really good rule a really good technique that you're supposed to follow that rule is completely pointless unless it can happen naturally which is another way of saying unless it can happen subconsciously Mm -hmm. so either that that you have that capacity it's something that you have or you don't have it that's okay and so this whole process of improvement is about allowing more to enter your subconscious and then being able to let allow that to flow out into your performance and so the way we facilitate that process is by spitting your truth go out there and just strike that doesn't mean overextend yourself that doesn't mean just muscle it it's the absolute opposite of that you're coming the muscling comes from like my mind is trying to hit this ball your mind doesn't hit the ball your body hits the ball let your mind be the calm let your body be the storm and like you'll you'll give electric performances so 
yeah, the dream stroke this week really helps helps embody that. And you do that with your racket. So live stroke racket is about like connecting that thing that you're just painting the court with this electric performance and making that like literally a part of your limb. It's like, like Zeus throwing his lightning bolts. It's like Zeus throwing his lightning bolts. So, you know, live stroke racket, you know, it could be definitely live stroke lightning bolt. You know, live stroke racket, like, is about fusing that um, so that you have your tool. Like, you have this thing that is, that is, that is, when you're on the court, it's a part of you. It's, it's how you be authentic on the court. Like, go play a tennis match, like, without a racket. You know, it's like, it's part of, it's like a part of you, you know. There's a reason in the military, like, they make you, like, sleep with your rifle and, like, do everything with your rifle. And, like, yeah. like it needs to be a part of you. Like, this is your tool, you know, just like your phone, you know, probably is, like, pretty close to being a part of you right now. Like, <laughs> for a lot of us. And it's like, you know, we want to do that with our racket. So, you know, live stroke racket kind of is the culmination of everything we've been talking about. And um, I love live stroke racket a lot. Yeah. You know. It's really powerful. They work really great together, both of these. Mm-hmm. So sizes. that's the lineup, man. Week five, like, like it's a power. It's definitely a powerhouse week. It's my favorite week. Um, I think you know, like it's yeah. just powerhouse, and it's like it's what I like. I it's my go to, man. It's my go to to like solve a lot of this stuff. You know? mm-hmm. And. That raises the energy in and of itself. Mm-hmm. So, what do you guys think? Any questions? You guys got any questions, comments, concerns? That's the tool lineup. You got any last words? Go out there and spit your truth, guys. You do it with your racket. Go out there and paint the court with your truth. It's an empowering process. It's a really, really empowering process. There's, there's nothing to think about. You know, like, I think... Because there's such an emphasis on improvement and there's some, such an emphasis on training, during training that there's more of an analytical process. We're thinking about what is a better way to do something. That's not, that's not how you perform. You don't perform by remembering to do stuff right. That's like the slowest part of your mind, the part of your mind that remembers what it's supposed to do. Like that part does, you don't perform from that place. So, you know, don't make this intention into something that's difficult. Don't make this intention to something that you have to do. Like going out in there and spitting your truth should be the easiest, most fun, most authentic, most liberating process of your entire life. Like what we're essentially saying is only you know what the right decision to make was in that situation. Even your coach watching, he doesn't know. Yeah. He's not the one playing the match. He's not the one feeling the emotion. He's not the one completely plugged in to the other opponent. Only you know it in that situation. And when you, re- when you actually come to that realization, it's so empowering. Because now it's just like, there's no reservation anymore. And that's another big word I like to use during this week is, is no reservation. Why are you reserving your expression? Why are you holding back a little bit? Now, I understand the, the opposite of that isn't to just overextend yourself. That's not what I'm talking. But no, like, take the reservation out of it fully. Just let, let it rip. And it's just like, man, stop caring what people think. Stop caring what people say. They're not in your shoes. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, that's what, like, I'm telling you. If you actually sustain that intention of just, like, spitting your truth, like, y- your performance makes quantum leaps. It's not this incremental little improvement you get by analyzing and making adjustments. This is stuff where you're like unlocking potential. It's an unlock thing. Your process gets unblocked and it just boom, it can flow. Like this is the pinnacle. You want the pinnacle of confidence, what, how, what confident people do? The pinnacle of it is they don't care about what other people are thinking. Yeah. They're not playing in res- trying to automatically they're so 100 percent of their attention is dialed in to spit in their truth now that has to do with what your opponent's doing yeah remember like your truth is this is a unique moment 
I don't know what I'm even capable of giving because I'm I'm an ongoing improvement process. Like, and I'm just gonna give that and that is my truth. And so it's not a disregard, but you're just taking it in like this is this is the situation. Now how am I gonna assert myself in this situation? And so just that's that's the, that's the only thing your attention needs to be focused on. All of these thought processes are attempting to follow rules that you think you're supposed to follow. But if you're really honest with yourself, man, they're just they're just creating so much mental activity, and and then you use the outcome to reaffirm whether that was the right one or wrong one, or how good you did it or how bad you did it. And it's just like the whole process is such a waste of time. Yeah. Like I promise you, one tool I'm planning on making real soon is how to self-analyze. Okay. And there's a time to self-analyze. It's not during the match, and it's not before the match. <laughs> That's not the time to self-analyze. That's the time to zone. Get zoned and be like, I'm, I'm going to go out here, and I'm going I'm to elect, electrify 10 miles in every single direction. That's how hard I'm going to go out here and spit my truth. It's going to be mind-blowing. Just do it. Don't even trust what I'm saying. Just do go it. out there and do it. And cause what because like if you think about it, like when we're performing our best, there's a level of trust with ourselves. If you're not spitting your own truth, you don't trust yourself. You're affirming to yourself, I'm not trustworthy. And when you start spitting your truth, you're affirming to yourself, I'm trustworthy. I can trust my own experience. I can trust my own decision. And what happens with that is all of this mental activity that was uh, was arising because of the untrust trying to control the process, it begins to dissipate. And when, when there's no mental activity going on in your mind, that soft voice, it's always soft. The judgment's really loud, but underneath the judgment, there's this soft voice, it's called your intuition. And when you can actually plug into that, that's when you can just pull these shots, just like out of nowhere. And like every single shot you make is just so utterly mysterious. You're disguising it without even trying to disguise it. Like you're able to read, you can see what your opponent's doing. You can read them like a book. It's just like, We've all experienced playing against someone like that. It's impossible to play against someone like that. It's so frustrating, you know, and it's so effortless for that person too. You want an effortless thing? Spit your truth and don't give up about anything besides that. Just do it. Yeah, which do includes it. the last point. Yeah. There's not even like, there's no last and first anymore. It's just like, this is, this is, I'm, I'm too busy spitting my truth. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, let's, let's go. All right, guys. Yeah. That's it. We got, that's all we got for you. Get after it. Go out there. Shut down your computer. Shut down your phone. And get after it. Do the tool. Yeah. Proud of you yeah. guys. Give yourself that credit. Yeah. And start the process of finishing strong. Go after it, guys. Peace, guys. We'll see you next Tuesday.